Hey everybody, and welcome back to Ducks and Download. So this evening, I wanted to go over a brief part two to my force sensitive species, because these next three species that I want to talk about are extremely unique in the way that they both look at the force, use the force, and deal with force abilities in their own community. First, let's start with the Togruta. Now, a lot of people might be thinking why I left the Togruta out of the last episode, where I talked a lot about there being these force sensitive species. Well, the Togruta, being these amazing natural hunters, do have a strong affinity with the force on Shili, their home planet. Not that they don't have this force sensitivity everywhere, or that a lot of Togruta aren't force sensitive to a degree, but many of them don't become Jedi, it seems. We don't see as many as a lot of the other species. I think one of the main reasons for this is the Togruta are an extremely tight-knit family unit. Much like a pack of wolves on our planet, they deal everything in the unit. They all of their issues are dealt with by their family and by those in their tribe in town. The Togruta are an extremely hunter-forward species, which has turned them into this very pack mentality, very one-for-all kind of species, which is also why they probably have a much stronger affinity for the light side, since selflessness is common among their people. Now, of course, the Force is strong in them, and they do have many Force-sensitive individuals, I'm certain. But most of them prefer to stay on Chile and prefer to stay with their family because it's been ingrained in their life for so long to be part of the family and to carry on the traditions and the ways of the Togruta. I really don't think we're going to see a whole bunch of Togruta show up in the next Jedi Order with Rey Skywalker. Now, it would be amazing, though, if the Ahsoka series does actually take us back to Chile because we're getting the backstory from Tales of the Jedi about Ahsoka Tano's mother, maybe they're doing that because within the Ahsoka series, she'll go back, speak with her mother, speak with her people, and we can get some more Togruta lore. I'm so down for specific species lore. Twi'le, Togruta, Zabrak, Gand, all of them have such amazing stories that I'd love to be told. So that goes to number two then, the Gand themselves. The Gand, like Zuckus, a known bounty hunter, have very special members of their race. These Force-sensitive Gand actually become very high members in their society, much like the Barando monks with the Keldor. These Gand run and operate a lot of the society, as the Gand do have a sense of hive mind since they are insectoid species. Many of them seem to find their Force powers in a way of telling a bit of the future or premonition and being able to always kind of track their prey, which is what makes them such good way seekers and the ability to go out and hunt and find becoming bounty hunters to bring back money for the Gan populace. These special Gan also choose mostly not to leave their planet unless they need to to help the planet, following a very strong tie of the Force as fate and will. Much like I mentioned in the last video, the Talortai also have a very strong connection to the Force and are very sensitive to it, making them amazing pilots, but they don't like to touch it or play with it because it's so sacred to them. Now, the Gan don't worship the Force, but in a sense, they worship the Gan as an entity, the hive mind helping in that, of course. They're extremely cunning and very powerful, but of course lack what most would consider powerful moves of the Force, like push, shock, choke, things like that, instead honing all their skills into tracking and premonition. And the third race that really doesn't use the Force the way a lot of other people would in the Star Wars galaxy are the Chiss. Now, only female Chiss are known to ever be born with a Force-sensitive ability, and they are what is known as Skywalkers, which is what made the fun connection when Thrawn first heard Anakin's name. These females have the ability to touch the Force, or as of course they say, Skywalk, allowing them to travel through hyperspace in a different way. The Chiss do not have normal hyperspace drives like, like the rest of the galaxy has. Instead, they use these Force-sensitive young females, usually very young, that way their emotions don't cloud their judgment and their abilities to guide them in small hyperspace jumps to allow them to get to the places they need to be as quick as possible. We don't know much after Thrawn enters the Empire if the Empire technology goes back to the Chiss ascendancy as grandiose, so maybe the Skywalkers aren't as needed anymore, but we definitely don't ever see Chiss in the Jedi Order except for the Knights of the Old Republic online game, and even there it's not canon because it is male and female. So we don't exactly know what to believe there. But it is still a very awesome race. The females are so very in tune to the Force that they also usually make great strategic generals and very powerful warriors. The male just having to step up and just be as cunning as Thrawn to really keep up with them. 
So if there's any other species I missed that you would love for me to talk about, put it in the comment section down below. I'd love to review a species that I haven't dived into yet. Of course, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. It means the absolute world to me when you guys show me how much you care about this channel. Have a great rest of your day, and may the force serve you well.